Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vic. We're going to continue our Inkscape tutorials. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a YouTube cover image using Inkscape. So if this is your first time on the channel, you'd be happy to know that Inkscape is actually a cross-platform program. So that means that you can use it on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. However, if you have an M1 Mac, your mileage might vary because I think they still have a lot of bugs with the M1 chip. If you have an Intel Mac, you shouldn't have any issues at all. For this tutorial, we're gonna need a couple of things before we get started. First of all, we're going to need the Inkscape logo. So I'll link this in the description so that you can download this file. The other thing that we need is a Google font. In this example, I'm using the Chonburi font, which is this one right here. Make sure you download this and install it to your system. So whether it's Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, I'm sure you could search for instructions. I'll try to link it in the description should be pretty easy to install it on your system. Let's go ahead and get started and let's launch Inkscape. So when you're launching this for the very first time, you should be greeted by a quick setup over here. I'm just gonna click the light checkerboard because I like to have a checkerboard background. Everything else should be at a default. Click save, click one more time and we'll go ahead and do a new document. So this is our blank document over here. It defaults into the A4 page size. So let's go ahead and change this. So let's set up our page. To do that, we go to File, Document Properties, or Control Shift D. Now, as a note, it's I think it's very important to actually remember the keyboard shortcuts. It's gonna make your workflow so much faster. So let's uh, change our document properties. Click on Landscape and we'll change this to pixels. And for a YouTube cover, it's actually going to be 1280 by 720. So this is our page size now. So let's start with creating the background. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle. Now I'm just gonna draw a rectangle here. And there's a couple of things that I wanna set up before we get started. I wanna make sure that the stroke is none. So to change the stroke, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and change the stroke to none. So you see the outline disappear. The other place that you could change that is the fill and stroke settings. So control shift F, you can click on stroke paint and click on the no paint option. So while we're here, let's change the color of the fill. So we could change that over here somewhere. So we can change the color or use this color palette at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to leave it as this pinkish color for now because I'm going to grab the colors off of the Inkscape website. So let me escape out and select my rectangle again. And let's change this to pixels. So we could change the size to 1280 wide by 400 height. So that's kind of what I want. And I want to align this to the top here. So the top corner or the top line. We'll go to our align and distribute tool here or control shift A relative to the page. I just want to align it to the middle of the vertical axis and then to the top edges. So of course you could try to move it around but it's gonna take you forever and it's not gonna be as accurate as using your alignment tool. So I recommend using the alignment tools. So we've got our top rectangle here and what we actually have is we have a gradient. We're taking inspiration from the Inkscape website over here. And as you can see, we've got a bright orange, almost yellow to a dark orange color gradient. I'm going to grab this color. So I'm gonna to need to use a color picker tool. So if you're in Linux, you can download this color picker tool. I've just got the flat pack version, makes it super easy. I'm sure you have an equivalent color picker in Mac 
and Windows as well. So let me just click on that and I'll grab this orange over here. Now, if you're following along at home, what I'll do is I'll copy and link this code. This is the hexadecimal color code in the description so that you can just type it in. So if you just want to follow along as we go through the exam, switch back to Inkscape over here and let's go to our fill and stroke or control shift F. Now we've got a few options over here. So we've got a flat color. And what I want to do is I'm going to move over to the linear gradient. So let me click on that. And as you can see, it's kind of changed it to the gradient here. However, I don't want this pinkish color. So let's go back to the flat color and let's change that over here. So I'm going to paste that color, the one that we picked up. So it's that yellowish color. And let's shift it to a linear gradient. Now, I actually don't know how to add another gradient using the same shape because when I add something over here, I can't really manipulate what's happening. So let me just go ahead and actually not mess with this. I'll show you a workaround. But first, I want to demonstrate something. So you could edit this gradient over here. So if you click on Edit Gradient, you'll be presented with this line. So you can edit this to extend the gradient as far or as little as you want. You could actually change the angle. So you can move it diagonally if you want up or down, so it's really up to you. And you can even extend it out if you want. So I'm just gonna change it back to the default. So Control Z all the way till we get back to the very beginning over here. Let me escape out and click on my select tool, select my rectangle here, and I'm gonna duplicate this. So this is the workaround that we're talking about now. Control D to duplicate, or you can go to edit and then duplicate. So let me just pull this down so that you can see that this is now a different rectangle here at the bottom. So now what we want to do is let's change this back to a flat color and we want to pick up the secondary color gradient, which is this darker orange. So I'm going to go back to my color picker tool and I will pick up that color code. So this is it over here. I'm going to copy this. Of course, I'll link this in the description and let me paste it into the RGBA box over here. So there we go. Something weird is happening. There we go. I don't know what happened there. It kind of just glitched out, but let me just shift it one and back and it gives us the color that we want. So now we've got two rectangles here and we just want to place one over the other. So since this one has a bit of transparency, we want to place the orange one underneath it. So let's go ahead and go to our align tool. So I've got the rectangle selected over here. We'll go to the page, align it to the center, and then back up to the top. And as you can see, it's covering our other rectangle here. So we can lower this object by using our ordering tools over here. So we can lower it one step down or using the page down uh, key on your keyboard. So let's just lower it down. And we've got our gradient over here. So let's just switch back to see our work. So this is the gradient that we wanted. And what we've got is our gradient over here. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create the white space or the white rectangle at the bottom. So that's going to be super simple. Just select our rectangle tool again. I'm just going to draw it out here. You could always use the snapping, but I prefer to just type in the value of the dimensions. I find that it's easier and a lot quicker and obviously more accurate. So th uh, 1280 by 320. So 320 plus 400 of the top here is 720 in total. So now I want to make sure that this is filled with white and let's make sure that our stroke is none. You can see here that stroke is actually none, but if you're not sure, you could hold the shift key and click on none that changes the stroke. And now, Let's go ahead and align this. So we'll align it to the middle of the page. And now this time you want to align it to the bottom edges. So let's zoom in and check it out. It looks like it's aligned pretty good. So 1280 by 400, just checking the dimensions, 1280 by 
320. Now that's really good. I like that. This is a good base for us to get started. Now, what I want to do, this is not necessary, but I find that it's helpful, is let's set this as the background layer. So we'll select both, go to layer, and go to the layers toolbar here. So control shift L if you want to use the keyboard. And let's add another layer. Let's add it below the current layer and let's call this background. So let's add that. And when I select this, it actually hasn't moved it to the background layer. So it's still on layer one. So let's select all of these again, right click and move to layer. And I'm gonna move it to the background. Now I can turn these layers on and off and I can lock it so that it's not moving around and I can't change any because that's pretty much set. We like it as it is. I recommend creating a layer and locking it. So now let's add our text and our Inkscape logo. Let's start with the Inkscape logo. So I've got my logo downloaded over here as an SVG file. So the easiest way to import it is to drag and drop. I'm just gonna click okay on the default settings. Now, by the way, I realized that we haven't saved our documents. So to make sure that you don't lose any work, just go ahead and save your file. All right, we've got our file saved. Now we can continue with our work. So we've got the Inkscape logo selected over here and I want to resize this. Now, a good rule of thumb is when you're resizing objects and you don't want them to lose their aspect ratio is simply to lock the height and the width or to lock the aspect ratio so that now when you resize this, it's not gonna look wonky. So I'll give you an example. So if I unlock that, you can see if I pull this one side, you can see it gets distorted and that doesn't really look great. I always love the original aspect ratio. So let's go ahead and lock that and make sure it doesn't change. Now, what's happened is when I created this, when you're working with layers, is that it actually created it in the background layer. It's locked it now. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's fix this together. So let's unlock our background layer. Select our Inkscape logo, right click, move to layer. We'll move it to layer one. So there we go. Now I'm gonna make sure that I click on layer one here to be the active layer and let's just lock the background. So now we're working in layer one. All right, sorry about that, but that's a good learning exercise in case you think, oh my God, what's happened? Why is it not moving? Just note that it could be your layers. And now we're ready to add some text. So the first text that we're gonna add is just the word Inkscape. So we've got our text tool here. That's what I did. Uh, we're gonna select our text and open the text toolbar, Control Shift T over here. And let's change the font to Open Sans because that's what I used. And I'm gonna change it to Bold, Apply and I'll click on this again and I'll resize this and make sure same as your objects, it's gotta lock the aspect ratio. Otherwise your text is gonna look wonky. I'll resize that. And now I wanna change the fill to white. So this bottom palette here is just a quick way to change the stroke in the fill. So I'll change the fill to white and I'm gonna change the stroke to black. So to change the stroke, I'm gonna hold down the shift key, click, and there you go, it's changed the stroke. So that looks pretty good. Now the other text that we're gonna add is tutorial 2022. Now for this text, we're gonna be using our Chonburi Google font. So I've just searched for it, Chonburi, apply. Now, if your font is not showing up over here, it's probably because you installed it while you had your Inkscape program open. Make sure you restart Inkscape and your font should um, show up. So make sure you do that if in case it's not showing up. So we'll resize the tutorial text here in the same way. So I'm just gonna pull that out. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then lastly, we're gonna add the final text, which is how to create YouTube covers. Again, we'll change the font to Open Sans. Click on that, hit apply, and then gonna change that to bold, hit apply again. I'm gonna escape out and select this again so that we could resize. And we'll just pull this out to resize it, make it a lot bigger. And that looks pretty good to me. We'll move the logo a little bit here, give some space. And as you can see, 
um, if I zoom in, this is kind of nice because it has a bit of a shadow. So it gives us a bit of that 3D effect, it makes the uh, cover a little bit more rich, you know, gives that rich feel a little bit more dynamic. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Anyway, let's do a little bit of fine tuning. We're going to do some alignment stuff here. So the Inkscape text and this tutorial, I want to make sure tutorial 2022 is sort of centered underneath Inkscape. So select Inkscape here, holding down the shift key select tutorial 2022 going to the align and distribute tool now we're going to change this to first selected going to align this to the center so it's going to put this to the center of our first selected which is inkscape you'll see it move there we go the other thing i want to do is i want to make sure that there is even space at the top and at the bottom. And one of the ways to do that is to do a grouping. So I'll select Inkscape, hold down Shift and Tutorial over here, and I'm going to group these two objects. So go to Object, Group, or you can press Control G. And as you can see now, this is now in one group. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to center it onto this rectangle. So if you remember, we've locked our layer. So I'm going to go back to the Layers tab here, Control shift l and temporarily I'm going to unlock our background. So now that that's unlocked, we can now select our background, select Inkscape Group over here, and then we can go back to our Align and Distribute, and relative to the first selected, and make sure that we align it along the center of the horizontal. So it didn't move by much, but it did center it. So now we should have enough distance, equal distance between the top and the bottom. And finally, I want to make sure that this text over here is aligned with the letter I for Inkscape. I'm going to select this group and it doesn't matter. I can ungroup this or I can just select it as it is because the edge is over here at the I. Hold down the shift key again, select the how to text here and align to first selected left edges. So it looks like I didn't leave enough space. So I'm going to reduce the size a little bit and I'm going to do the alignment again. That looks fine. So there is our final image. The last thing that we need to do is to export this out. So go to File, Export PNG Image, Export As. I've just navigated to my tutorial folder over here and I'm just going to replace this because I've made this before. Go ahead and replace that. If you're doing it for the first time, of course, you're not going to get that dialog. When you export this out, make sure you're exporting the page and you can double check. Width is 1280 by 720. You can leave that at 96 DPI. So this is the final result of our cover image. So it's looking pretty good. Now, if you have issues, with uploading a PNG file in YouTube, you can always convert this into a JPEG file depending on what software you use. Sometimes it's as simple as save as, and then you can just change this as the JPG and it should do it. So now we've got cover JPG. It looks pretty much the same. You're gonna lose a little bit of quality, of course, but this is what we're going for. Now I hope you learned something today and I hope that was easy to follow. Now, if you want to support the channel, make sure that you like the video and subscribe. I hope to put out more content in the future. Again, this is Vic. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.